Yeah. Right now we're making some grain spawn and we're just getting some of our grain loaded up into one of these bins that we just use for storage. Grain. This is a grain that I haven't used. It looks like rye grass seed. It looks really... Does it have a tag on the bottom there? No, they made a mistake. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, we're using white proso millet as our main grain of choice. Um, we might have a little rye grass seed. Uh, we'll experiment with that next time. Sometimes mistakes like that, though, uh, end up being um, like huge successes because you'll... Uh, Gives you an idea to experiment. You know? That happened to me once with the millet. Or one time I went to go pick up some uh, Milo and ended up with some of this millet and uh, ended up using it, and I really like it better. It has a really small uh, grain, so you get really a uh, lot more inoculation points when you use it to inoculate your substrate. Those are a white proso millet. Uh, you can use a multitude of grains to cultivate your spawn, uh, ranging from millet, which is uh, my most desirable. We've also used uh, soft red winter wheats or other various wheats, rye grain, uh, basically whole rye berries. Uh, also, another favorite of mine is uh, Milo or sorghum. It makes a great grain. You get these nice spherical grains, but uh, millets. I found is the, the optimum one. I mean, you can really stretch your spawn further with it. I've seen people online using you know, Uncle Ben's rice. Oh yeah, stay away from the Uncle Ben's. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the DIY home version. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll just take a scoop of uh, this grain and we'll weigh it out. 2 To our desired weight. A lot of people will, will prepare their grain spawn differently than I do, but I found that I like to just measure out the desired amount of dry grains, and then I add in the, a percentage of water to basically shoot for a target ratio of 38% moisture with our grain spawn. Uh, as you get higher in the volume uh, or bigger containers, you want to kind of decrease in the moisture content of your grain spawn. Uh, like a smaller quart jar, I'll shoot for maybe a 50% moisture content uh, as opposed to these 38% content ratios with these bigger bags. It'll be a six pound bag. So, uh, just, yeah, basically some simple math, 38% of the six pounds and we have our moisture content. The reason why I like this method of producing grain spawn as well is because it's really little to no waste. All the water that we're using and all the grain uh, gets added and sterilized and we're not wasting any water. There's other methods where uh, grain is required to be soaked for 24 hours and then after that it's rinsed repeatedly until the water runs clear and then after that grain is laid to dry out on the table until you get the desired moisture content after which it's placed in your sterilizers and sterilized. I found that method works well especially with smaller batches but you use a lot of resources a lot of water will get used for the rinsing of the grain. So now we're going to start adding uh, water into our bags. And we'll just pour it into this uh, kind of like a pour pitcher bowl. And that will make it easier to get the water into the bag. So we'll just set that aside. And as we keep working, we'll let those grains start absorbing that moisture. Yep, so yeah, liquid culture will get poured into here or uh, wedges from our Petri dish will be transferred into here. And yeah, after that, uh, full colonization usually takes about two weeks. So this, all these seeds will be covered in a white mass organism uh, called mycelium. And then from there, we could break it up and pour little bits of this grain spawn into blocks of sterilized uh, wood-based substrate. Um, each little seed becomes a vehicle to carry the mycelium into our substrate and basically acts as an inoculation point from uh, which mycelium can start to grow and reach for new food sources, such as our oak sawdust. 
This spawn in particular will be doing a lot of uh, Lion's Mane spawn and uh, some shiitake and some uh, a few other varieties as well. Yeah, one of these six pound bags will create 20 to 30 production blocks for me. So you can also take it another step further and with each of these bags, you can turn them into 10 new spawn bags. So I can inoculate this bag with a culture. Once it's grown out, fully colonized, I can then take the fully colonized bag and turn it into 10 uh, more bags that will be used to either inoculate more blocks. Uh, so yeah, one bag can become two to 300 production blocks, or you can even keep expanding it further. Turn this one bag into 10, those 10 into 100. Uh, those 100 bags inoculate 20 to 30 production blocks. Now you're at 3,000 blocks uh, from just one single wedge of tissue. So this is required to grow out the mycelium, uh, basically in a nutrient uh, grain-based substrate. And also, each little seed acts as a carrier for the mycelium onto our sawdust. Uh, everything has to be sterilized pre-inoculation, so we kill off any, uh, basically, endospores, mold spores, or bacterial contaminants uh, that can also compete with our mushroom mycelium's precious food source. Uh, so yeah, without grain spawn, um, it'd be really hard to grow these mushrooms. <laughs> If you were to take just liquid culture and pour it directly into sawdust instead of using grain spawn, then the, the sawdust really doesn't have enough nutrients to allow the mycelium to really take off onto the sawdust. So that's why the grain spawn comes in handy. Um, you'll notice when inoculating the grain spawn, usually within 24 to 48 hours, you've already noticed the mycelium has started to grow onto the sawdust. When using liquid spawn, that's not the case. Um, usually it's, it takes a long time, if any, to show any growth. And since there's such a lack in nutrients uh, to really start the mycelium off on the right foot, then it, it, you can have a higher chance of contamination and uh, the yield will be very low. The mushrooms utilize this grain spawn for its nutrients. So it enables us to get a really good flush off of these production blocks. Um, we target, you know, three to five pounds of mushrooms on our first flush. And that's due to the recipe that we use or the formula. Without that, um, you know, our yields would be very low and almost not worth it uh, for the cost and everything to produce. So that's why uh, using the correct spawn for the correct substrate or form, you know, liquid media or whatever is really important. I'll inoculate some shiitake blocks with a bag of grain spawn and that'll basically be like a first generation production block for me. And then I can take it a step further and I'll label these blocks like a G2. It's a generation two shiitake block. That means I've taken a production block that has been inoculated with grain spawn, broke it up and use it to inoculate 10 more blocks. So each of those is labeled G2. That tells me when I'm going through my incubation area that, oh, this block has been inoculated with sawdust. I can't really inoculate. I can't use this to expand into more blocks. This has to go into fruiting. So um, I don't want to take it past the past the second generation of, of spawn. I could very well take it past this and keep on going for another 10 blocks. The only thing is my yields would dramatically start to decrease. I mean, right now I'm gonna be averaging two and a half pounds per block right here. If I take it in this, another step further, I'm probably gonna be looking at 1.75 pounds per block. So it's up to you if you really wanna keep it going and you have the space and room to really just keep, keep on expanding this mycelium. You can very well, you know, weigh out your weigh out your options and what's going to be the most rewarding for you. Um, so yeah, I usually just take it to G generation two, and then these will become our fruiting blocks to go into our grow rooms, and we can get a good amount of mushrooms from these. Shiitakes is a their shiitake mushrooms take about eight to twelve weeks before we put them in our grow room. It takes longer than most of our mushrooms. Most of our mushroom species usually are about two to three weeks and we can start fruiting them, specifically like oyster mushrooms, two weeks and they're basically ready to go. Any Anytime after two weeks and then I kind of start becoming a little concerned uh, if everything's okay. Kind of like with plants and how, uh, how you plant a seed to get, get a crop to grow, this is very well the case for our grain spawn for our mushrooms. It kind of acts as the seed for our mushrooms as well as a jump start of, of really good nutrients to boost up uh, mycelial growth and yield. 
This starts out as a food source for our mycelium, but once the mushroom mycelium has completely colonized your grain spawn, it becomes the seeds for the mushrooms to grow. So you utilize this as an inoculum, pouring little bits of it into different production blocks, or each production block. Uh, in the end, this will end up being 30 production blocks for us, each harvesting around two to three pounds. So one bag of grain spawn, uh, 30 production blocks, about 90 pounds, 60 to 90 pounds of mushrooms. Or we can just keep expanding and uh, turn this into 10 bags of grain spawn and uh, 300 blocks and yeah, just keep going. Really, there's no stopping the mycelium. It's always hungry. So everything that gets inoculated straight from the Petri dish uh, is a G1, generation one. That means it's the first transfer away from the plate. And then if I use this to grain to grain, which is a common term, it means transferring grains to new grains, uh, that would be a generation two. And I really like to stay at around generation two. I don't like to go past it. Uh, going past it, you can further the risk of uh, basically just like a weaker strain, less vigor, and uh, maybe even more of a chance of contamination. Uh, just until recently, I just did some experiments and I uh, found that just depending on what size of the vessel I'm using, I can kind of add in the moisture and the dry ingredients all at once. And uh, depending on, like if I'm going from a quart jar to a gallon size jar, for instance, the, ra the ratio of moisture to grain is gonna have to decline as you get into a bigger vessel. So for the bigger ones, I stick to 38%, the smaller ones 50%. It works really well. Uh, you might wanna, if you're using jars or whatnot, you might want to add a little gypsum because it does become harder to break up the grains and to kind of mix them. As far as commercial uh, commercial cultivation goes, I really enjoy this method of making grain spawn. That's one of the things with uh, mushroom cultivation is it's not uh, something you can really speed up. You gotta be patient and let nature do its thing. So our grain spawn has been uh, Basically all the appropriate uh, ingredients are added. We have our grain, we have our water, we've added a little bit of gypsum to prevent our grains from sticking after sterilization, making it more easier to shake. Uh, so we're gonna let these bags soak for the next, uh, next day until tomorrow morning. We'll let them soak overnight. We'll fold them up like we are now. And uh, we'll come back in the morning before we load these into our pressure steam sterilizers and we'll actually unwrap them, we'll shake them again to redistribute any moisture in these bags. And then at that point we can load them in our sterilizer and uh, sterilize them for four hours between 15 to about 15 PSI, 15 to 20 PSI. After that four hours, we will allow them to cool overnight in our laboratory and uh, commence the inoculation process the day after. So. Friday, these will be inoculated with a uh, fresh tissue culture or petri dishes or liquid culture.